Another cookie I love to make at Christmas is gingerbread. I'm crazy about gingerbread. As Granny would say, I'm plum foolish about gingerbread. So the recipe I love to use actually come from Granny's mother, Gazzy, my Granny Gazzy. And it's one of those old recipes that uh, sometimes you'll come across that have like, instead of a, in uh, the actual like a fourth of a cup or something like that, it says a small glass or maybe a lump or a, a big spoonful or those kind of things. So it's a recipe I really love and I love to make. I have really fond memories of Granny making it when I was growing up. It wasn't a favorite cookie for everybody. I think my brother, older brother Steve and me and Granny were, I, I think we're the ones that liked it the most. I don't think that Pap and Paul actually cared much for it. And in my family, I, don't, I think they'd prefer to have a different cookie too. But I like to make them because it reminds me, of course, of, of being a little girl at Granny Gazzy's where they'd be on the kitchen table at Christmas or at Granny's house when I was growing up. Um, and gingerbread is not just, of course, uh, something from Appalachia. It can be found all over the world. But it does have really strong tie to Appalachia because of the use of sorghum, sorghum syrup in Appalachia, in the Appalachian Mountains and other places as well. But for so many people, uh, sorghum syrup and honey were the, like that was the sweetener. So you couldn't really get sugar, but you could still make gingerbread or other cakes and pies and things with sorghum by using that as your sweetener. So today I'm going to share that great recipe with you. Now over the years, uh, between Granny and myself, we kind of uh, made, figured out what that lump or that small glass, those kind of things were. So I've changed the, I've, I'll read the real, I'll read both to you so that you can see the old words that were used. And as always, if you look in the description below, there'll be a link that'll take you to this recipe. So you'll need um, one small glass of milk, and that's one fourth cup of milk actually, one teaspoon of cinnamon, one teaspoon of ginger, one teaspoon of nutmeg, and one cup of syrup, sorghum syrup. A big wad of lard, which we, over the years, Granny figured out that was two and a half tablespoons, and then three cups of flour and one egg. And then you'll need some additional flour for when you roll them out. Um, and so now I'm going to show you how to put it all together. Okay, I've got my syrup in there and in the mixer and now I'm going to add my lard and we're going to cream that together. As far as syrup goes, if you're looking for it, if you, you live in an area where someone makes it, I would suggest, you know, checking them out and seeing if you can buy some directly from them. I, the syrup that I'm using today actually come from a local produce stand and they get it from a family who makes it. Um, and I would just make sure that it's 100%, it's just pure sorghum syrup, that you don't want anything else added. You just want the real syrup. That's all you need, and that's what this is. So that would be my pointers if you're looking online, is just to make sure that it's the pure syrup. Okay, now that we've got that creamed together good, it's so beautiful, we're going to add our egg. Mix that in well. And sorghum is really sticky, so if you see it sticking to the sides, you may need to scrape down the sides of your bowl. beautiful color. Now we're going to mix our flour and our spices together. Spices smell. Smell like Christmas. Then once they're mixed together we're going to add alternately add flour and then add our milk a little bit at a time. There's way more flour than there is milk of course with that one fourth of a cup. So now we've added all the flour and all the milk and we're ready to roll out the cookies. And you can see it's a very soft dough. Okay, we're ready to roll out the cookies. 
if you can, some of you will probably notice I've got like a Tupperware thing here, like a, I don't even know what you call it, a mat, I guess, to, to actually roll stuff out. It's got the pie things on it. When I did my video about the stack cake, the traditional Appalachian apple stack cake, if you've not seen that video, you can check it out. But a few of you said, hey, what you need is, because me and Corey that day were using just wax paper tape down. So what you need is this thing, and they described the Tupperware thing that they'd had for years and years and years, and that that's what they used. And when they said that, I thought, wait a minute. Granny used to have one of those. I'll see if I can get it from her. And then the more I thought about it, I thought, no, uh, I have it. Granny, give it to me. So I just have to find it. So I did. I found it. So thank you for reminding me that, of that, those of you who, who uh, left that comment. So this is a, a really, really soft dough. I don't even use a uh, rolling pin. You can if you want to. You'll need to add a little bit of flour to it as you press it out. But I just use my fingers and my hands and, and press it out. And then you can use whatever kind of cookie cutters you want. Today, I have a dear friend years ago got me a pig and an acorn and um, some other little things. So today, that's what I'm using because of the blind pig and the acorn, you know. So what I like to do is, and you could pat them out by hand too, but once I have the, the cookie, then I take a little, and, and you can, you, you don't have to do this, it's just something that I started doing years ago and I like how it looks, but I just take a toothpick and just make some little uh, decorations kind of on it. Just some little holes, you can just put like for the ring of the acorn, you could put, if you just wanted to put the whole top, if you wanted to do it all over the cookie, that'd be great too. And then those little places will stay once it's baked and it just gives it a little attractive kind of, um, um, you know, a look instead of having to ice them. Once they are done, a lot of people do ice gingerbread cookies. They use like maybe a lemon, lemon uh, flavored, or maybe just powdered sugar, but like you can make a lemon flavored little icing and kind of drizzle over them or dip them on it or even just put it over the top of them and that works out really nicely too. So these cookies are not overly sweet since what they have in them is just that, that cup of uh, sorghum. And I like to think about in those days when, uh, you know, when there wasn't many sweets and sorghum was definitely something that was a staple in Appalachia. So even though there wasn't many sweets, there was usually a jar of sorghum, a jar of syrup. And I like to think about how, what a treat this would have been in those days when they weren't bar bombarded by sweet things like we are today. But also, sorghum is really healthy. I mean, it's got, it's got like tons of iron in it. You can, you can do a search and look at all the different vitamins and different things, but it has fiber, it has a lot of potassium, but especially iron. So that, having that uh, access to that in their diets really helped as well with that, with nourishment, not just with the sweet part of it. I'll try to do my little pig. He's cute. And if you, if the dough's too soft, you can use a spatula. I'll just give him a little eye. And the thickness of the cookie really just depends on, on your preference. This is more like a cake kind of cookie. Now, I suppose you could do them really, really thin and make it more of a crunchy cookie. Uh, I have a good ginger, a real crisp cookie though recipe. You can check out that video that's really good. But for this gingerbread, I like to do them, um, oh, about, I guess between an eighth and a fourth of an inch thick. That's just the thickness that I prefer. But uh, again, that would just be personal preference and you could do them uh, any way, any thickness that you preferred or that you liked, if you like a really thin cookie or if you like a, a crisp one. And we're gonna bake them at 350 for about 10 minutes. Your oven may be different, of course, though, so you may need to um, to double check that, but you can tell when they're done, when they're firm and kind of kind of brown on the bottom. Now, a few weeks ago, when I did was talking about the apple stack cake, one of my older cousins on my Granny Gazzy's side, this is Granny Gazzy's recipe, he told me that he could remember 
when she would make those spat cakes, she that her making them when he was a boy and and her help. I mean, him help getting to help her. And he also told me that sometimes she would use when she was making gingerbread that she would use a snuff jar as her cookie cutter. So I was like, how now that I know that, I said, told him, I said, I have to, I'll have to try that myself. So there's my little, and if you get too much flour, you can brush it off, but generally they, it'll just cook in. So there's my little, uh, it's so wonderful to find out things like that. Like I had no clue, Granny had never told me that, but it took a cousin telling me, oh, and I also remember, because he's older than me, because he got to spend more time with Granny Gazzy, you know, telling me those memories and sharing that she used a snuff glass to actually um, cut out her cookies. Really sweet memories. Using the little acorn somehow seems fitting for gingerbread. I don't know why. I mean, the pig does too, though. It all kind of goes with it in the bag. Okay, we're going to get these in the oven, our first pan. Corey's over here helping me. That's why I say we. I'm going to let Corey put those in the oven. I'm going to finish with these, and then we'll show you how good they taste once they're done. So the gingerbread cookies, some of them still baking, but I've got some out of the oven that I wanted to show you. I'm gonna show you one of the, you can see the little dots, how it just gives a little bit of decoration where you're doing that with the, how I was showing you, I was doing it with a toothpick. So you can just show it gives a little bit, even on the, on the angel, just gives a tiny little bit of definition to it. Just something easy and quick that you can do, especially fun to do with kids. Um, now I wanna break one of them open and show you. So it's kind of a, I don't know if you can see the inside, kind of a chewy cookie on the inside. So it's kind of dense. Um, and as I said, you could make them thinner. You could even make them thicker than this if you want to. But this is like the, the size that I, that I enjoy. Mm, very good. Not overly sweet at all. It'd be really good with a cup of tea or a hot cup of coffee. It'd be good if you um, if you did want to. If you want to add some sweetness, like I said, you could put powdered sugar. You could mix some powdered sugar and lemon flavor, um, lemon extract together, and milk, and make like a little icing like that. A lot of people think that lemon goes especially good with gingerbread. Same thing for orange, any kind of citrus. People like that, but I just like them plain. Mm. Such memories of childhood in every bite. That's what it reminds me of. Granny Gazzy, Granny, myself during the holidays was something that we really enjoy making. So I hope you enjoyed learning how to make Granny Gazzy's gingerbread cookies. I hope you'll leave me a comment. Is gingerbread something you enjoy? If you do make cookies, do you usually uh, put an icing on it or do you eat them plain like we do? I hope you'll share those thoughts with me. Most of all, I hope you'll just keep dropping back by while I celebrate Appalachia, which includes a lot of traditional Appalachian foodways and recipes handed down through the generations of my family and other families. Ooh, somebody made cookies. Where are the cookies? Mm-hmm. I can smell them from downstairs. Mm. Here's just some milk. Granny Ooh. Gazzy's gingerbread. They're good, mm -hmm. aren't they? Mm -hmm. Not too sweet. Just perfect. Mm. Mm. Very good. And warm. Tastes like Christmas. Mm -hmm.
Did the bathroom have a, have a porcelain white sink? Mm -hmm. It was like on legs. On legs? Because it was tiny. And did it have the handles that were like that? Like white porcelain handles? I don't think they were white. They might have been, but I don't think but they were. Like but they that. turned, yeah. They turned. Yeah. Yeah. And Granny told me when I was asking her one time about... I don't know what I was asking her, some kind of information I wanted for the blind pig and the acorn. She said that Granny Gazzy didn't really want an inside bathroom. See, it's funny when you, uh, those people, this is a common thing when bathrooms first come about. Um, you got to think about it. Up to that point, everyone used the bathroom outside. So then you're telling people you're going to do that nasty business in your house. So a lot of people didn't want bathrooms inside because they thought it was dirty. They thought that was, so she said Granny Gazzy didn't want one. Mm, that's so funny. Um, but then after, I think she said it was Junior, when he had, you know, moved off to work and married and have kids and all that, one year he come back and he spent, that's what he did during that time, he, he built, a ba built that bathroom. Because mm. he wanted her to have a bathroom. So she would have been, Gassy would have been born in like 1900, late 1800s? I mean, if you were like yeah. 90, in the 90s, then you had to be born yeah, at the Yeah, I don't remember century. exactly. Papa Wade was born like in 07 or something, so I guess hers was about that time. See, I wish so much. I mean, so many you could wish that. You'll probably wish that about Granny. you probably wish that about me. I wish it about Pap, and I asked Pap lots of stuff. But so many things, like I, I mean, Granny Gazzy and Pap did too. I mean, and Granny. But what an amazing time. And she was the, like the oldest of her family. So she ra and had a big family. Her daddy, you know, is a famous uh, pastor and all that. Had a, had a big family. And she, you know, had to help raise the kids that come on after her because she was the oldest. So there's all that experience. Then once she was married and her and Charlie, they went out to uh, Swannanoa, Canton area and no, not Canton, Swannanoa, Asheville area, and worked in the logging camps. And she cooked, and he worked, I think. Mm -hmm. So, what an experience that would have been. And then she got pregnant, I think, with Faye, and she they come home. Um, anyway. 55 years from now, will I be looking back and having my kids, you know, feel like, oh, that's so strange that you would do this like this, because now we have it like this? Yeah, probably. I mean, it's the, you can say that for every generation. Like, of course, about Pap's generation, when he was a boy, hardly anybody had a car. Of course, they didn't have inside bathrooms either, but hardly anybody had a car or a phone. And then there was a stage where they got a radio. Then eventually there would have been a stage. But even in the 60s, early 60s, my mom and Papa's house didn't have electricity in it. So it was just a different, but then in my lifetime, uh, you know, to go from now people, all this stuff on demand and watch any channel you want, we had like maybe three channels. That's if you could get them to come in. It was mostly just about one. And uh, phones, I remember when I was a girl, the first phone we had was a party line. We had to share it with every house up here and some down the road like Zelma and people like that was on our party line. It is weird. You had to pick it up, and if somebody was on it, you had to hang it up. And you had to wait for it to be clear for you to use it. Yeah. yeah. So, and then now today, we were all walking around with a phone in our hands. You know, it's just strange. So every generation is... Yeah, stuff like um, that. Yeah. So there probably will be. I mean, to go from the days of Pap talking about the radio, and he had this, Paul, have to tell you, but this great story about... He had this radio. I think somebody was going to, I can't remember the story, if somebody was going to give it away or throw it away or they thought it was tore up or why it wasn't his family and he got it. Then he needed a battery and it was this whole story about trying to get a battery. And it wasn't batteries like we use today. It was different, like those big square mm -hmm. and about him getting a battery and he finally figured it out. And it's just a great story. Paul can tell it way better than me because I don't remember it. But... Um, once he he didn't fiddle with it and do this and do that and you know he really wanted that radio so he could hear music and then the day that he finally got it to work he didn't realize that it was the volume was turned up full blast and when it finally worked it like scared him because it all come on at once and i can't remember the song i wish i could but paul can tell you the exact song that pap remembered he never forgot the song that was playing when it come on like that and how every time the rest of his life he thought of that song, it was, it wasn't what you would think it is. I mean, it wasn't like it was, you know, how cool would it have been if it had been a classic country, but it wasn't. Yeah, I can't remember though. Paul could tell you. 
he, I've heard him tell the story. Pap told him about it. Um, but yeah, so, and now, but what I was saying was, so to go from that to then when Pap would, um, him and Paul would be singing or playing or doing something, you know, and, and sometimes he would just wake up and some old song would be on his mind. And so he'd tell Paul, I've remembered this song, but I can only remember a few lines of it. And he would tell Paul like the, you know, whatever the little rift was he could remember. Um, and wonders of today, Paul could just Oh, search so and be like, remember. here's the song that you could remember. So he would remember just a song he heard as a boy. Yeah, and it would just come back to him, and he'd be like, I remembered this song, but I don't remember who, you know, I don't remember much about it. And um, I can't remember which it was, but there was one song. Again, Paul could tell these stories better than me. But there was one song like that that Paul found. And so then he said, you know, it was like after church or something, and Pap was down at his house, and he said, oh, I found that song that you was talking about. And so he pulled it up on YouTube, whoever it was singing it, and I can't remember the song or who it was. And he said they was just listening to it. And then he said, all of a sudden, he looked over there at Pap, and he was like tearing up. And he was like, oh, gosh, does the song make you sad? And Pap said, no, it takes me back. You know. But it would be the same for us, So, uh, like for you too, especially uh, so many songs that you hear. So many songs I hear, especially Leuven Brothers songs, I can close my eyes and be like a seven-year-old little girl somewhere sitting in I Granny's lap or standing or behind somebody's legs, right, or at church, sleepy, wanting to go home or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. I need to get something to mess with in the yeah, that's sweet. I mean, it's funny. But so yeah, huge changes mm. for. I think these need to cook another second. I don't know. Okay. Got no brown on them. Yeah, I put them back up. Put them back for a few seconds. That pan don't cook as fast. No, it don't. Yeah. This little pan right here is a freaking demon pan. <laughs> I'm telling you. When I was at Austin's the other night and I made those potatoes, I had a I had a big pan just like that that I used, and the potatoes turned out horrible. And I was like, it has to be that pan because that's what it's you told the, me. Yeah. So that that old black pan that's yeah. wonky, it but cooks the best. It's old, it's cheap. I mean, I've had it since I was first married. It was probably come from the dollar store or something. But it cooks the, and it's literally warped, but it cooks I the best. I don't have that big old whip on it. I don't, like it's nice something thing. about them. I think these are double insulated, oh, yeah, like, really and that big. one's just cheap, but it does, it cooks the biscuits best, it cooks yeah. cookies best. Even It goes sideways on you, but it still cooks the best somehow. Anyway, but yeah, so lots of changes in somebody's life, like Granny Gazzy's, but also in mine, and it will be in yours, Even too. In mine. I mean, I'm kind of a little bit too young now to see, I mean, I can't see as much change as you have, but, excuse me, but even in my lifetime, there has been some change. Oh, gosh, yeah. I mean, well, when you were a little girl, everybody, kids didn't walk around with cell phones. Well, I didn't have a cell phone. No, I mean, phones, I, I mean, when you I, and I, when You and Katie phones, actually had cell phones before I did. Yeah. And when they first come out, they were the chunky flip phones. It wasn't, there was no such thing when I was a kid as a smartphone. Right. Yeah, well, there were those bag phones, the first one your daddy ever had when him and Pap worked together because they had to have one. I mean, were cell phones, I mean, when I was like born in 96, were cell phones a thing or was it only the bag phones? Probably the bag phones. Yeah, I mean, that's the first phone your daddy had, and he would have never got a bag phone if he could have got a, you know, a flip phone right. or something. But then, because the it's so, because you had to plug it up and all this. When did know. the cell phones come about? Yeah, I guess. I didn't have one. I resisted it for a long time. I didn't want one. That's one of my goals for 2022 is not to mind. Even in, goal. I can remember um, one time when y'all were doing a uh, Veterans Day thing at the college. Okay, yeah. And, um, Henry come, we invited him, and I remember him with his cell phone showing me and Pat pictures, and I thought, Lord, Henry's got a cell phone, I don't um, have one. Yeah, this is, <laughs> this is yeah, not Which I eventually did get one. But. What she think? They might need to go. Mm. One more minute. Maybe, yeah. Uh, 